Hello and welcome back to another guide. My name is Saiken and today we're taking a look at Xenonauts 2, the pre-release guide. This quick and concise 10 minutes, no repetition, no bullshit, a pre-release guide. We'll look at all the things that are important for you in order to optimize your first run with Xenonauts. Word of advice, the game might change between the pre-release and the full release. However, I think the changes will not be that drastic. So the general consensus of what I come to throughout uh, this uh, guide is very much still applicable. So, uh, second disclaimer, there is a affiliate link down below, uh, which allows you to buy the game even cheaper than on Steam. If you are interested in it, uh, consider using the link and supporting the channel with that. Thanks for that, and let's jump right into the actual game. So, I wanted to go through three different distinct topics. Topic number one, the Geoscape and managing everything on the actual Geoscape. So let's take a look uh, first and foremost. The game itself uh, gives you a, a high amount of funds to begin with, typically between two and three million as you're starting, so depending on your difficulty settings. It is very difficult though to get additional funds. You're relying very much on the funding of the different nations, but that will be much lower throughout the game. Think about it as kind of a million per month, but it then goes down to 500k per month. And with more and more bases and more and more upkeep, you will just barely make ends meet. There are going to be options just like an XCOM to uh, get additional money from missions, but that A, requires you to always win the missions and B, it also requires you to have the specific mission types. You can sell stuff, but uh, just like the black market in XCOM, it, it remains to be seen whether or not you really want to do it. My tip for that is make sure that you are really, really tight with your budget. So that brings us to the base and the strategy layer in general. A couple of things that you want to look for. Number one, there are three different uh, categories of where you want to spend the money. Broad category number one is around soldiers and equipment. That will make our, your technical missions easier. Number two, in research, that requires laboratories to be built up. And number three, in actual production, which requires workshops to be built up. My personal take on the game so far from playing it in the early access is you want to make sure that you are okay with your laboratory and with your research as this tends to be uh, the main determinant of pushing the game forward. So that would be priority number one. I would put priority number two on the soldiers as you want to make sure that you can sufficiently win all of the missions and priority number three in the workshop. It is okay to st uh, stick with one workshop for the beginning. I personally like to expand for a second laboratory and put enough uh, scientists in there to just get ahead of the curve. Which brings us to the general buildings and their uh, usefulness. So uh, just from uh, the get-go, a couple of things that I would suggest for, uh, for your playthrough. Missile batteries can be delayed until a little bit later, until you're actually in danger of getting your base attacked. And if you are not afraid of losing a base and if you're very confident in your skills, you might as well skip them. But it is a dangerous path. They don't cost a lot compared to other uh, buildings, but they are actually quite useful. The two buildings that I would go for at the beginning is Medical Center and training center. I would potentially even go for two training centers. So medical center allows you to get a higher uh, healing rate. So uh, soldiers that are going to be uh, inevitably uh, injured will be ready for combat uh, faster. And since there is no tired mechanic, but really the hit point uh, loss is actually going to be the main uh, problem for your soldiers. You want to make sure that they are uh, fit as fast as possible. I would go for one medical center at the beginning, uh, have one medical center in every single base that you are having. And if you feel like it, there is a, maybe even a second medical center, but that is questionable because they are quite expensive with 350K. Training centers on the other hand are super important. They give experience for the time that the soldiers are staying in the base. I would go with one at the beginning at least. And then when you do have more soldiers, get a second one. Laboratory we already talked about, potentially two at the beginning, and then just keep it there for now. Workshop one is enough. Living quarters, as many as you need. Now, that generally concludes kind of the base layout. In the closed alpha, 
the whole uh, air combat is not included yet but it is relatively simple uh, there are a couple of uh, options that you can go with you can generally have uh, missiles that are better against smaller ufos or better against larger ufos so you just need to equip it accordingly and then you do have your hard points a couple of the weapons later in the game uh, just uh, still follow the same logic can't speak about the air combat yet, but I can speak about all of the other things. Which brings us to section two of this guide, the soldiers. Good, let's talk about soldiers, shall we? Soldiers do have varying uh, stats. They do have hit points, they do have turn units, accuracy, strength, reflex, and bravery. Hit points determine the amount of damage that they can take. Let's shortly talk about damage and the calculation of damage. The calculation of damage uh, works as following. Enemy does a certain amount of base damage and the actual damage that is being dealt by every shot of every weapon within the game uh, alternates between 50% of that base damage and 200% of that base damage. This is a huge uh, variant, uh, variety. If uh, you look at that var variance compared to the uh, XCOM variance where you typically only have like one or two damage points off, this means that even small pistols can uh, quote unquote crit or deal a lot of damage and could potentially one shot your soldiers. So the way that it works is whatever damage that roll comes up with, then armor is being detracted and the remaining uh, damage goes straight into hit points. Imagine most of the weapons uh, to deal as a baseline between 25 and 45 points of damage. Heavier weapons later will deal more damage, but that can already give you an indication that every individual shot kind of can go up uh, be uh, on the upper side between 50 and 90 points of damage. Mitigation of armor, just so that you know that as well, starts with base armor around uh, 12 to 15 uh, and then goes up as the game goes on uh, to exoskeletons with 35 armor. So uh, that can mitigate some of the damage, uh, but not all of it. And there are also weapons that can bypass part of the armor. Bottom line, you want hit points to survive, but don't um, assume that just because someone has a lot of hit points that they are indestructible. Armor is your friend, but not getting hit in the first place is even more of a friend. Second, turn unit, time units. Uh, time units uh, determine just how much you can do. It is a more granular uh, version of the XCOM approach to it, where you just basically had two actions, or the Gears Tactics version, where you do have three actions. Essentially, time units are a bit deceiving because, yes, you can do more with more time units. However, most of the shots of most of the weapons will cost a percentage of the time units. That in return means that even if you do have a thousand time units, uh, you can only shoot a limited amount of times. Time units, however, determine speed. So just read this more as a movement speed. You want uh, mm, generally good hit points it's a medium important stat you want high uh, turn units on any form of soldier that needs to walk a lot so typically soldiers that are carrying shields or typical soldiers that are carrying shotguns you want to get up and close time units are your best friend next up accuracy um, from a rating perspective hit points uh, moderately important uh, time units moderate mi minus uh, so it's not the main set that I would go for accuracy important one of the main sets that I would go for anything below 40 accuracy is a huge problem most of the weapons use a multiplier of your accuracy so say if someone has 80 uh, 60 accuracy a sniper rifle uh, for instance would take a multiplier 150 percent of that so an, uh, an aimed shot would have a 90 percent chance to hit then there are a couple of other f uh, factors that um, that go into it such as um, for instance cover um, or other vision distractions but generally speaking your accuracy uh, for the weapons is the base determinant uh, for their uh, ability uh, to hit uh, you, every weapon typically has different um, modes of firing. We'll come to that in a second. Typically the ones that uh, can, uh, the more often you can fire, the less accurate uh, they become. And 
Most of the weapons also have an accuracy drop-off, meaning uh, the distance uh, will essentially cause your soldier to uh, hit less often. The only exception to that is the sniper rifle, which doesn't have uh, a drop-off whatsoever. So, accuracy, important skill. Basically, I am very seldomly accepting anything below 50 accuracy. The ones that do have below 50 accuracy, I typically use them. <coughs> excuse me. Typically use them as a uh, grenade throwing or shield uh, wearing soldier. Strengths determines uh, so accuracy important. Strengths moderately important determines your carrying capacity. Also determines the ability to mitigate recoil and your distance that you can throw weapons. I typically use high strength on characters that wear a heavy armor that need to to throw a lot of um, grenades, and I use them on characters that have heavy weapons such as the machine gun to compensate for the recoil. Generally, moderately, maybe moderately minus important. Reflex, very important. The three big stats are bravery, reflex and accuracy. Reflex determines basically your um, order in the Overwatch um, iteration. The way that Overwatch in this game works is whatever is not spent as as um, time units will automatically go into an overwatch in a 45 degrees cone in front of you. Uh, your soldiers will uh, react to anything that is en that is an enemy and that walks. Enemies have a reflex, uh, reflex, you have a reflex, both roll against that reflex and the better roll comparatively uh, wins and gets to act first. Aliens are fast, hence you want to have high reflex. If you do have a uh, really poor reflex so that makes the character less attractive and if you take the uh, weapon platform out of it you can see that all of the characters have uh, almost 50 and above reflex it's one of uh, those disqualifying criteria it's just like low accuracy low reflex would get them uh, out of the squad as well Finally, bravery. Bravery determines your uh, ability to mitigate mind attacks, any form of psionics, as well as your ability to mitigate wounds and not automatically start uh, to uh, create a panic chain. You want uh, to have characters with high bravery. Anything below 40 is an immediate disqualification. Anything I personally take 45 and below as an immediate disqualification. So. What do you need for the individual loadouts or roles? Typically I uh, go with one or two snipers. You want very high accuracy and you want to have good reflexes in minimum. Both of that helps you to react fast and give uh, good cover. For characters in the front line, shield bearers and uh, assaults, I typically go for high time units and high strength as both of that allows you to move uh, fast and throw grenades far. It certainly does help to have above average bravery and above average reflexes as well, but it's not that important. Then it, um, on top of it, uh, heavies and grenadiers for me fall into an in, uh, interesting category uh, of fire support. Heavies are dealing a lot of damage and can uh, suppress, but they require a high strength. They require an above average accuracy. Um, I'm willing to compromise on time units and uh, hit points. They don't need to move that uh, fast, but that is what they definitely need to do very well. Grenadiers, similar concept. You want high strengths because typically they need to carry a lot uh, and you want a high accuracy because the, uh, the grenade thrower per definition is a very inaccurate weapon. So both of uh, those classes need those stats. Everyone else that doesn't really fit a, a good uh, scheme is a rifleman and typically uses that as the default. Which brings us to the equipment, so let's do a short guide through that as well. To start up with equipment, you do have a primary slot, a secondary slot and a backpack and all of uh, that is being limited by your amount of carry weight. So strength definitely is ge generally an important, uh, an important stat. There are a couple of pre-loaded uh, loadouts. Assault is the classical XCOM assault minus the sword. Uh, Grenadier is the Grenadier in uh, XCOM minus the ability to have a heavy weapon. The heavy weapon is the Grenadier minus the ability to have a uh, grenade launcher. So both of them together would be the grenade class. Rifleman is potentially best described as a uh, medic. Uh, so 
potentially the support class in XCOM minus the ability of the Gremlin drone. Shield would be closest to the Templar uh, minus the ability to melee and have any cool uh, psionic abilities. It's really just a pistol and a shield but they can go in first and take a lot of uh, the overwatch fire and sniper is pretty much the sniper all of the classes generally within xenonauts are much more down to earth no special abilities and so on just very basic military uh, style imagine uh, if you were to mod XCOM in a way that everybody is a rookie and they just continue being a rookie but their stats increase so to speak and they can use the different weapons that's pretty much what you get in xenonauts so that brings us to uh, the roles of those characters. The way that I'm generally looking at it is uh, you want to have a front line that typically are assaults, shield bearers and weapon platforms of sorts. These guys are starting um, at the very front of uh, the Sky Ranger and are essentially the first ones to deploy. Then you do have kind of a midfield, which um, is where heavies, grenadier and riflemen fall into. And whenever I am building a fire line, these are like shortly behind uh, the scouts. And then you do have a back line, which are the snipers. And uh, they typically uh, will need to have good elevated positions and um, a free rein to take shots on the enemies. Let's revisit a few of the weapons and just give them a few, uh, give them a rating. Ballistic pistol uh, is an okay weapon for a secondary uh, for a secondary slot. Okay, specifically for grenadiers because grenadiers' weapons can't overwatch, and uh, hence the pistol offers an ability to just squeeze in that extra overwatch. Generally, the damage of the pistol is very low, so I can't recommend it as a weapon unless uh, for those specific situations where you need an offhand. Sniper and grenadier potentially are the ones where I would put it onto. Uh, ballistic shotgun very good uh, but falls off incredibly fast so the uh, ballistic shotgun itself is potentially one of uh, those weapons where uh, you are where you are having to make a decision whether or not you want to uh, take them uh, they shoot three times uh, with their slugs but they essentially have a 6.25% uh, drop off of accuracy per tile. Realistically, anything further than three, four, five tiles away is becoming a problem. I like them in assaults. Uh, they are great for breaching uh, close quartered uh, headquarters, but other than that, the, uh, the weapon itself is not very good. The assault rifle is one of the weaker weapons in my perspective. It's a decent weapon. Um, to have single shots but also burst fire it is okay if you're uh, finding yourself um, in a trench or behind some sort of cover where you can continuously shoot my biggest grudge with the weapon is it uh, really doesn't uh, have a lot of accuracy and with a solid weapon drop off of 1.5 percent uh, it it does not feel like uh, it has a, a lot of medium range where it typically would need to shine. So if anything, I would potentially give it less uh, weapon drop off. Uh, moving on to the heavier uh, brother of that, the ballistic machine gun, which can only shoot burst fire or full auto. Uh, that one is great when it works, but it is very, very situational. What do I mean with that? You can see down there in fire modes, the base burst fire mode already costs 50% of the time units. Uh, the burst fire or full auto costs 75% of the time units. It's very seldom that you can move with that weapon and then really take a shot. So the um, uh, short and sweet of it is this is more a support weapon that suppresses because uh, enemies will keep their heads down once they are being hit by it. And you really want to find a decent, uh, slightly elevated position with a heavy gunner and not move a lot. Then the weapon is good. Moving on to the second last weapon, which is the heavy launcher. Uh, that weapon is potentially one of the most deadliest weapons, simply because it deals AOE damage, has four shots very very high po uh, point of damage the 35 kinetic uh, can uh, can uh, be dealt to anyone in the area however it has a problem with its uh, with its uh, hit bonus uh, the 12 percent uh, drop off um, are not very good so i've uh, i've seen it 
in medium range where although you have a huge explosion range uh, radius uh, the weapon itself doesn't really work well so what makes it so good in XCOM is it is 100% accurate here it's really more like long war where you're always inaccurate so you need to find kind of flanking angles where uh, mm, there is no one between you and the explosion zone which essentially makes it more di uh, difficult on top of it um, you do have a couple of uh, a couple of uh, just major uh, problems uh, with it to, to fire it regularly. Uh, it, it does only take 34% of your time unit, so you could flop a couple of grenades, but that is deceiving in so far as you need to go very close uh, to the enemy. Lastly, the sniper rifle, which I would uh, give a solid A, maybe even S tier, um, can only shoot, uh, shoot once per turn uh, because even the normal aim shot will take 56% of your time units, but it deals a lot of damage and on top of it, it has no uh, drop off, which is absolutely fantastic. It has a maximum range though, I figured that out in one of the missions, so you can't uh, just scope across the entirety of the map. Moving on to equipment, uh, what is good, what is medium, what is not so good. We got uh, fragmentation grenades, which I would uh, give a solid A tier. Uh, you can throw them, very solid damage, and it's a high percent chance to hit also AOE damage. So I would highly recommend specifically the frontline characters to carry one or two of them. We got uh, smoke grenades. Not a big fan of uh, those. I've tried it in various iterations. Smoke grenades uh, typically can smoke off corridors where enemies then lose line of sight, but they are unreliable um, as I figured out and they cause a bit of a problem. So they are not really like the XCOM uh, smoke. They are more like real smoke uh, grenades. Flashbangs, uh, I would say B, a B tier item. Uh, they can uh, create a non-level explosion, automatically suppresses, therefore makes it uh, easier for you to withstand enemy fire. So when you can't get an enemy down, flashbang is the way to go. S tier item, demolition charge. You should have a lot of uh, them on your um, uh, frontline targets. Number one, it uh, deals a thermal damage with a moderate amount. That is just the icing on the cake. But number two, uh, it removes cover and it removes it very reliable. Cover is a problem in this game. You want to remove it whenever possible. So get demolition charges. You will thank me later. Bad kids. I would say B plus, maybe A item. Uh, taking wounds in the game is a problem. Uh, having someone with a med kit nearby, specifically in the front line, is a god sent, a heavenly sent uh, gift. And since you can have all of your explosives in your backpack, uh, the uh, med kit ha has a nice slot on the secondary. C4 charges, okay. C, C minus item, uh, does a lot of damage to walls, but typically you don't have the time units in order to do it. And the normal demo charges actually get the job done as well. Combat knife, really bad. D, a D tier item, I don't like it. I've tried it a couple of times. It is actually quite bad. Uh, I much rather take the, uh, the shotgun but if you must have a second uh, item and one that doesn't really have a ammunition restriction, then I suppose the combat knife is okay. It doesn't deal a lot of damage and it actually also takes quite a few time units in order to do it. 25% of your time units just to melee and then typically a lot of time units to move there is a really bad trade. Combat shield. Uh, a tier item, I would say. Combat shield has its own health, which is 80, and that will go down first before you even take damage. Absolutely phenomenal item, but unfortunately requires your primary slot, so requires you to then either uh, go full Rambo with a combat knife or take the pistol. And then finally, the explosive rounds, mainly for uh, the uh, for the weapon um, uh, here, for the grenade launcher. Um, they basically are high explosive rounds or heavy smoke rounds. I personally never was a fan of the smoke rounds, so that gets a D tier item, but the heavy explosive items are good. Which brings us to modules. Modules are little charms that you can uh, carry in your backpack. And they will give you a passive bonus, super good in order to fill up carry weight and get some stat bonuses. Tactical module gives you higher accuracy. Kind of goes without saying that you want that. 
on the riflemen and on your snipers and then you do have uh, the steel plates which gives you an, a little bit additional armor without any uh, downside you want to have that on your front uh, uh, front line type of characters both of them get solid s tier so really what you're getting is an individual loader for all of the characters my uh, suggestion to you would be have a nice mixture if you now ask yourself well Saiken what's the best um, sort of setup for a for a group it would be a balanced one I would with nine uh, operatives have three operatives that can uh, act in close combat four operatives that are having medium combat range and two operatives that have long uh, range so the typical startup could be two assaults and one shield uh, mainly to breach, throw grenades, get rid of cover and um, simply be in the face of the enemy. Then have a lot of mid-tier or mid-ranged uh, characters. One heavy, one grenadier as support and cover removal and the rest riflemen and two snipers. That would be the setup of uh, successfully starting into the game and uh, moving on from that. Really the game continues to follow the same uh, path the weapons upgrade but it's very much the same kind of type of um, uh, archetype that you're filling as the characters become stronger their stats will grow but ultimately you will have very similar roads so that's it if you enjoyed the guide if it was helpful for you consider leaving a like and a comment down below and if you like uh, xenonauts 2 consider using the affiliate link and see you in a bit good luck commanders and take care bye bye